welcome to you on this glorious Sunday morning. The Lord be with you. Praise the Lord. Praise him, you servants of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his name, now and forever. Lord Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you for your shining light that pierces through the darkness that we are in. And may that light guide us and show us the way, just like a lighthouse that guides its ships. Lord, you are the way maker. As you stand and praise Jesus in your homes, take this time to send your praises up to him.
Jesus from all those prayers that came up to you we want you to know that we love you and we need you because you Jesus are the lover of our souls for purity together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you 
and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone for the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon our sins and set us free from them. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we kneel as we pray together the collect for today. Let us pray. O God, our Saviour, reveal your salvation through Jesus Christ, our wisdom and strength. Teach us to shoulder our burdens and give us the strength to carry each other as you have carried us through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the first reading. The reading is taken from Genesis 24, chapters 34 to 38, 42 to 49, and 58 to 67. I am the servant of Abraham, he began. The Lord has greatly blessed my master and made him a rich man. He has given him flocks of sheep and goats, cattle, silver, gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. Sarah, my master's wife, bore him a son when she was old, and my master has given everything he owns to him. My master made me promise with a vow to obey his command. He said, Do not choose a wife for my son from the young woman in the land of Canaan. Instead, go to my father's people, to my relatives, and choose a wife for him. When I came to the well today, I prayed, Lord, God of my master, Abraham, please give me success in what I'm doing. Here I am at the well. 
When a young woman comes out to get water, I will ask her to give me a drink of water from her jar. If she agrees and also offers to bring water for my camels, may she be the one that you have chosen as the wife for my master's son. Before I'd finished my silent prayer, Rebecca came with the water jar on her shoulder and went down to the well to get water. I said to her, please give me a drink. She quickly lowered her jar from her shoulder and said, drink and I will also water your camels. So I drank and she watered the camels. I asked her, who is your father? And she answered, my father is Bethuel, son of Nahor and Milka. Then I put the ring in her nose and the bracelets on my arms. I knelt down and worshipped the Lord. I praised the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me straight to my master's relative, where I found his daughter for my master's son. Now, if you intend to fulfill your responsibility towards my master and treat him fairly, please tell me. If not, say so, and I will decide what to do. So they called Rebecca and asked, Do you want to go with this man? Yes, she answered. So they let Rebecca and her old family servant go with Abraham's servant and his men. And they gave Rebecca their blessing in these words. May you, sister, become the mother of millions. May your descendants conquer the cities of their enemies. Then Rebecca and her young woman got ready and mounted the camels to go with Abraham's servant. And they all started out. Isaac had come into the wilderness of the well of the living one who sees me and was staying in the southern part of Canaan. He went out in the early evening to take a walk in the fields and saw camels coming. When Rebekah saw Isaac, she got down from her camel and asked Abraham's servant, Who is the man walking towards us in the field? He is my master, the servant answered. So she took her scarf and covered her face. The servant told Isaac everything he had done. Then Isaac brought Rebekah into the tent that his mother Sarah had lived in, and she became his wife. Isaac loved Rebekah, and so he was comforted for the loss of his mother. This is the word of God. Hear, O daughter, consider and incline your ear. Forget your own people and your father's house. The king desires your beauty. He is your Lord. Therefore, bow down before him. The richest among the people, O daughter of Tyre, shall entreat your favor with gifts. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is embroidered cloth of gold. In robes of many colors, she is led to you. O king, and after her the virgins that are with her. They are led with gladness and rejoicing. They enter the palace of the king. In place of your fathers you shall have sons, and make them princes over all the land. And I will make known your name to every generation. Therefore, the peoples shall give you praise forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The second reading is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 7, reading from verse 15 to 25. I do not understand what I do, for I don't do what I would like to do, but instead I do what I hate. Since what I do is what I don't want to do, this shows that I agree that the law is right. So I am not really the one who does this thing, rather it is the sin that lives in me. I know that good does not live in me, that is, in my human nature. For even though the desire to do good is in me, I am not able to do it. I don't do the good I want to do. Instead, I do the evil that I do not want to do. If I do what I don't want to do, this means that I am no longer the one who does it. 
Instead, it is the sin that lives in me. So I find that this law is at work. When I want to do what is good, what is evil is the only choice I have. My inner being delights in the law of God. But I see a different law at work in my body, a law that fights against the law which my mind approves of. It makes me a prisoner to the law of sin which is at work in my body. What an unhappy man I am! Who will rescue me from this body that is taking me to death? Thanks be to God who does this through our Lord Jesus Christ. This, then, is my condition. On my own, I can serve God's law only with my mind, while my human nature serves the law of sin. Hear the word of the Lord.
Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 11, reading verses 16 to 19 and 25 to 30. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Now, to what can I compare the people of this day? They are like children sitting in the marketplace. One group shouts to the other, We played wedding music for you, but you wouldn't dance. We sang funeral songs, but you wouldn't cry. When John came, he fasted and drank no wine, and everyone said, He has a demon in him. When the Son of Man came, he ate and drank, and everyone said, Look at this man, he is a glutton and wine drinker, a friend of tax collectors and other outcasts. God's wisdom, however, is shown to be true by its results. At that time, Jesus said, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, I thank you because you have shown to the unlearned what you have hidden from the wise and learned. Yes, Father, this was how you were pleased to have it happen. My Father has given me all things. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Come to me, all of you who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and put it on you, and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble in spirit, and you will find rest. For the yoke I will give you is easy, and the load I will put on you is light. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. We believe, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, to judge the living and the dead, and, the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Repent. Turn away from your mistakes and believe the good news. Or let me try this another way. For the wages of bad choices is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Maybe that's a bit too much. Maybe let me start again. But maybe let me start again with a comment. A comment that goes something like this. And I would hope that you would keep this comment in your heart throughout this homily. Christianity's conception of sin is so liberating. We dismiss it at our own 
Hello. Now, why would I want to begin this homily, or any homily for that matter, with a quote that seems so disabling because it talks about sin or mentions it? For many of us, we would rather not talk about sin. We associate, with, we associate sin with words like hell, disobedience, being far from God, and maybe also destruction. Scary, right? So we ignore it. Or we choose to change those actions. Or in other words, or, or actually, so we choose to change those actions that would usually be associated with sin and say things like, I made a mistake. So the wages of sin or the wages of mistakes is death. I made a mistake or I didn't realize what I was doing or I actually made a wrong choice. No, we sin. You see, when we distance ourselves from sin or the use of the word sin, we also distance ourselves from words like grace, forgiveness, salvation and hopefulness. Now you may be wondering, how is it even possible to associate sin with all these positive things that I've just mentioned? Things like grace and forgiveness. Let me use the words of theologian Barbara Brown Taylor to explain further. She goes on to say, Abandoning the language of sin will not make sin go away. Human beings will continue to experience alienation, deformation, damnation and death, no matter what we call them. Abandoning the language will simply leave us speechless before them and increase our denial of the presence in our lives. Ironically, it will also weaken the language of grace since the full impact of forgiveness cannot be felt apart from the impact of forgiveness." Unquote. So in other words, he or she who is forgiven much loves much. The point that I am trying to make is that language changes everything. When we change our language to present ourselves less evil, what we're actually doing is preventing ourselves from reaching a place of grace, salvation and redemption. Let me use an example here for clarity. Uh, we say that or have you ever heard that poverty is a state of mind? When we begin to reduce poverty to something that is in the mind, we take away the stench that is associated with the word and make it or turn it into something that is in our imagination, something limited to our headspace. Yet it has so much to do with our relationships with one another. If it's in the mind, then change your mindset and you will be poor no longer. What a load of, of, of nonsense. Sorry, I was struggling for a sanitized word there. What a load of nonsense. Poverty is not a state of mind, no matter what the intention of that phrase was meant to be. Poverty is a state of one human being abusing their rights or the rights of another in order to become better or live better at the expense of the other. Now, we all have done it. We have all been part of it and we have all become silent about it because it is no longer a smelly word called sin. Now it smells nice and it comes out of our mouths as survival rather than sin. Poverty. And if you remember what I said in a sermon about a month ago, poverty is brought about when we go to our wardrobes to find two coats and we think to ourselves, Ah, how fortunate I am. When what we should actually be saying is whose coat do I have? Or more harshly, whose coat have I stolen? Language is everything. Let me take it a bit closer. Last week I said, maybe this is easier to remember because it's last week and not a month ago. I said that Jesus sent the disciples out. They took nothing. And I said that our problem is mostly 
that we don't go or go out because we count the cost of going out and we are worried about what we will have when we return. Those are language changes that ensure the poverty of others. So let's get back to sin, seeing that sin is one of the themes in today's lectionary. When we realize that we have neglected or removed the word sin, or should I rather say substituted the word sin with the nice smelly words, we begin to realize our need to change. Say that again. When we realize that we have neglected or removed the word sin, or rather substituted for nice smelling words, we then begin to realize our own needs to change. We begin to realize that it is sin that separates us from the love of God. We also begin to realize that we are trying to do good and yet we sin instead. Not made wrong choices, not made mistakes, sinned. It is at that moment we realize that we cannot do it on our own. So I made a point of using poverty to explain my point. Let me use some other words, words that are sin as well. Apartheid, racism, abuse, corruption, murder, theft. And these are just a few. If we water these words down, we will never change the status quo. We need to call them what they are. They are sinful. In our gospel for today, there are many messengers, many messages. Some play wedding music and others play funeral music. And because the notes don't resonate with us, we often miss the message. We see people not eating like John and we condemn them. We see people eating like Jesus and we condemn them. We often miss what matters because we're so busy searching for what is comfortable for us rather than what is good for others. We forget when we need to celebrate. We forget when we need to mourn. We forget when we need to repent. We muddle along with our nice smelling words that allow us to feel comfortable. Let's talk about comfort for a bit. Let's talk about comfort for a bit. Come unto me all of you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. We often make these words smell nice by saying that we are Christians or born again or saved or have given our lives to Jesus and therefore we can take comfort in Jesus. Our yoke will become easier. But beware, this yoke is not meant for the powerful nor for the self-sufficient few. This yoke is for the weary and the troubled, for the poor and the weak, for the sinner. And here again, we have to recognize our actions as it is in order to have an easy yoke and comfort. We have to recognize that when we do these things that we often do to preserve ourselves, they are sinful. It is offered to those who just can't make it on their own. The yoke of Jesus, that is. Where do we fit in in this text? How do we even begin to imagine the kind of relationship to Jesus? This relationship of coming to Jesus in order to receive rest. Well, I think we begin by acknowledging that we have sinned. Be it in the advancement of apartheid, in the advancement of poverty, abuse, corruption, murder and the likes. We begin by placing the needs of others above our own needs. And there is nothing comfortable about doing that. It requires a steadfast reliance on a God who is able to sustain you. It is about recognizing that we've made smelly words sound like nice smelling words and that it has caused us to become silent or absent in the struggle of others. This in itself is actually a sin and it must be dealt with. Words matter. Choose them carefully, not just because, but because they have the power to build up or tear down. Now what would you say to this message? 
Amen. So as we pause and reflect on what we say and what we do, let us pray. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are the God who can do all things. You reign over all. Power and might are in your hands. When you decree, it comes to pass. Touch the minds and hearts of our leaders to implement only the counsel of God for the nations. We bring our beautiful country to you, Lord, for the restoration of our economy and the healing of our people. The present pandemic, which the world has to endure, seems overwhelming and hopeless. We pray that there is an intense global effort to produce a vaccine for COVID-19 and for the scourge to end soon. We pray for those suffering from this terrible disease and for all those who have lost loved ones and are mourning as a result of it. Lord, we implore you to comfort and lift their souls with renewed awareness that you are with them and you will carry them through. Give to them new faith and hope and a determination to draw ever closer to you. Fill them with your peace, your love and your holy presence. Lord, we pray for all those around the world who are currently experiencing times of hardship, be it as a result of violence, conflict, unemployment, poverty, disease, loneliness, anxiety, fear or depression. We thank you for the people you have placed to be able to help those in need at this time. We pray also for all Christians to share their resources and share their hope with those who are struggling. We ask for your hand of protection over those who are particularly at risk. We lift up to you the vulnerable citizens, all healthcare and medical workers, as well as all essential workers. We pray for all places of learning, most especially schools. We commit to your care all teachers, parents and learners who are feeling so anxious and so conflicted as children return to school amidst the soaring infection rates. Lord, we thank you for all that you enable us to do through the church. We uphold our rector in special prayer this day and we pray for all clergy and ministers of your word and sacrament. Although we have not been able to meet in fellowship, we thank you that we are still able to worship together as a community in different ways. We ask that we continue to hear your voice of guidance. May you hear the worries of every person's heart and may we have the wisdom to hear your response. We pray all this in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen. We pray together the prayer for Africa. God bless Africa. Guard her children. Guide her leaders. And give her peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. So will you stand with me in your homes or wherever you may be and we share the peace together as God has joined us in our hearts through the body and blood of his son Jesus Christ the peace of the Lord be with you always peace be with you
So we give thanks to God for the gift of this bread and wine. And we also to continue to give God thanks for your faithfulness as you continue to the well-being of the parish by contributing your tithes and offerings online. We pray together. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and indeed our duty and joy, Lord and Heavenly Father, God Almighty and Eternal, always and everywhere to give thanks through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, because through him you have created everything from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you delivered us from the slavery of sin when you gave him to be born as man, to die on the cross and to rise again for us. And through him you claimed us as your own people when you enthroned him with you in heaven and through him sent out your Holy Spirit, the giver of life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we acclaim you and declare the greatness of your glory. We praise you now and forever singing. <laughs> us, Father, through your Son, Christ our Lord, through him accept our offering of thanks and praise, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, so that they may be to us his body and his blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So to after supper he took the cup. When he had given you thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And so we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Holy Father, with these your gifts we, your people, celebrate before you the one perfect sacrifice of Christ our Lord. He's rising from the dead and he's ascending to the glory of heaven. Gracious Lord, 
Accept us in him, unworthy though we are, so that we who share in the body and blood of your Son may be made one with all your people of this and every age. Grant that as we await the coming of Christ our Saviour, in the glory and triumph of his kingdom, we may daily grow into his likeness, with whom, in whom, and through whom, by the power of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour be given to you, Almighty Father, by the whole company of earth and heaven, throughout all ages, now and forever. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. which we break. Is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We do not presume. 
to come to this your table merciful Lord trusting in our own righteousness but in your manifold and great mercies we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy grant us therefore gracious Lord so to eat the flesh of your dear son Jesus Christ and to drink his blood that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us Draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Thanks to the Lord, for God is gracious. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the body and blood of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and for keeping us by your grace in the body of your Son, the company of all faithful people. Help us to persevere as living members of that holy fellowship, to grow in love and obedience according to your will, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of your Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. And to the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love always. Amen. Shall we be seated as we share a birthday blessing? We thank God for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries and any other special occasions in our parish community and also our online community. This week we remember especially Liz Mark who will be celebrating her birthday on the 10th of July. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of birthdays. We thank you, Lord, for Liz. We thank you, Lord, for her stewardship and all that she does for us as a parish. We thank you, Lord, for 
for her years of service. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life that you've given to her, that she can be of service to us. We thank you, Lord, for her life. We thank you for her family. We thank you for her loved ones. Lord, as she celebrates her birthday, may you bless her, be with her, and may you add more years to her life. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Thank you for joining us again. Hope to see you again next week, Sunday, 8.30. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.